H2K Infosys provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Uh, can all the participants mute their phones unless they have any other questions? Okay. So the area will be, you know, uh, we'll be looking at uh, the building blocks of the Hadoop cluster, and you're going to see a few of the clusters across the globe which are available, uh, which people are using right now. And then we are seeing, you know, uh, probably the single cluster, the single node setup of a Hadoop cluster, and uh, different components of a Hadoop cluster. So the building blocks, right? To see what all the components make up a Hadoop cluster. Yesterday we were discussing, you know, we have 100 different computers and we call that as a Hadoop cluster. So, altogether of these 100 computers, right, there will be some few computers which would be managing the whole cluster and the other computers would be performing their low-level task of, you know, uh, performing the computations. So, let's see, like, there are, like, uh, uh, five different building blocks in total. So we should make up, you know, your Hadoop cluster. So the name node, data node, secondary node, job tracker, and the task tracker. We'll see more in detail of these things. Okay. So, uh, what is like, uh, there, are, there are definitely two different projects in uh, Hadoop. That's one product is called as MapReduce. The other product is called as HDFS, right? We, we, yesterday we are seeing it. So HDFS is basically a file storage layer and MapReduce is basically, you know, a file retrieval and processing layer, okay? So these two are two different and independent projects which are correlated to each other. But the only fact is that MapReduce will perform better if it retrieves the files from HDFS. Hello? Hello? Does anyone have any questions over here? Uh, I'm not sure. Seems like everyone has used their phone, and uh, I'm not sure if anyone is listening to the PPT. So can someone from, you know, from the participants can respond to me, then I would go ahead, otherwise I'll just stop it here. Okay, thanks Mohan. Okay, so, so this is the thing, uh, two different products entirely. So one is, uh, distributed file system where your files will be stored. And the other is MapReduce where your, uh, you know, your processing of your file starts. So just imagine, uh, give me a minute. Hello. Yep, yep. Hello. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Please join, no? Yeah, I'm Karishma. I joined it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question here, uh, Nagar. Yes, definitely. Nagar. Please go ahead. Yeah. 
Actually, uh, I posted yesterday also on the chat box asking that what all is the course content, what you will be teaching for the this thing. You are teaching the math videos with the ETL or you are teaching the whole this uh, with the Java? With the Java? Uh, so, I would be teaching the math videos with Java. Java. So, how much is like Java knowledge required. I have not done. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you in between the class because the same question yesterday I was posting in the chat and nobody was replying. Okay, so um, I mean, can you be a bit loud because uh, somehow you know the voice was breaking and uh, not breaking this list very low. Uh, actually, I have questions related to the course content. So do you want to answer it now or do you want to answer it after the class? Yeah, uh, but I will take it now only before we start. Uh, you know the the real aspects of the course. So actually, what all is the course content about this uh, whole thing? I missed yesterday class. Between I attended this for 10 minutes. But uh, I'm interested in big data class, but really with ETL, I told earlier also, so what will be all your con course content? OK. So uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday uh, I was sharing one, uh, uh, you know, one link where uh, you know where uh, whole uh, whole the course content was mentioned. Uh, so uh, I'll just post it in the chat once again for you. So this is a course content, uh, you know, on which we are looking at. So the first would be the introduction, then the architecture, then how do we install Hadoop, then what are the use cases of Hadoop. Okay. So the other map is used part, map is used introduction, development, hands-on, then, you know, few cases of map is used, then uh, different aspects of map reduce once again, and uh, the Hadoop administration. Then we have uh, you know the the knowledge of uh, what's upcoming in the new version of the Hadoop. Then uh, we also have uh, the introduction of different aspects uh, or different uh, ecosystems of Hadoop like Uzi, Scoop, Impala, Storm, Hypebase, HBase, and kind of, kind of these things. Okay, actually, uh, so when we will be covering, hello, can you hear me? Uh, 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 can you be, uh, uh, can you come again? Please, I didn't get you. Yeah, so when we will be covering this ecosystem highlight, so we will be little bit covering about this high page, at face, or we will be doing in depth of all these things also. Uh, so, uh, so it all depends on us, right? Uh, so it's like if, if I want to cover seven, seven aspects of the course in two hours, so I don't think that would be possible. Uh, okay, so uh, it all depends on us, like what what we want here. So if you say, okay, I want one or two of these, one of one or two of these uh, seven things, then probably you know we're gonna get some good idea of that. Actually, I don't have a knowledge of Java. I just know code Java. So how is the Hadoop and this data and is demanded in the market? With which complements they are more demanded? So I just want to know what are the profiles that like the more requirements are there. So, so uh, uh, in terms of the the job which I see, right? Uh, I was able to see jobs related to uh, map issues, jobs related to uh, people using Hive and Page, and yeah, these are the two major areas where I see you know, the uh, people are uh, having a lot of demand. Uh, Hive Page. Uh, is one area, and uh, uh, you know this one, uh, map is another area. So high peak is like me measured related to uh, your ETL thing. Okay. So if you so will be will be covering all these things, if a person doesn't know Java to start with map Uh No, I don't think I would be covering with Java. You know, if I start with Java, right, it would be like. Uh, I don't know. 
it, it would go in, in the other direction uh, you know us together completely but uh, you know the essential but the essentials of uh, java what we require over here is like pretty much limited we need not know the complete core java as well I don't have much knowledge about Java, not really comfortable. I have already done big data training somewhere, and I was I already know all these concepts and I'm listening to this installation and everything. But I was really uncomfortable doing the hands-on with Java. So I was okay. more comfortable doing this ETL with five and scripting languages, so I was making some course and then we can, uh, earlier also I requested actually the people if you have some bad way, but again I got a link so I thought I attended and see how it's going on. So I interested you in between the class because I'm more interested in what all is we are learning in this. Okay. Uh, so okay. Yeah. Anyways, you can go ahead with the class and we can talk later on or after the class. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. So there are like you know two different products in Hadoop. So one is uh, your HDFS, which is nothing but you know distributed file storage there, and the other is MapReduce, which is nothing but uh, you know uh, your processing layer. Okay. So in uh, let's let's talk about two different layers in two different ways. Okay. Let's talk about uh, HDFS first. Okay. So there are two masters over here. So uh, in HDFS as well as in MapReduce, you know the both of uh, the architecture is like the master slave architecture. So in HDFS, the masters are name node, and the slaves are data nodes. The slaves are data nodes. Just look at the data node. Okay. So the slaves are the data nodes. Whereas in your MapReduce, your job tracker is a master, and task tracker are the slaves. So three different types of permissions. One is called the masters, the other is called the slaves, and the other is called the clients. So clients are the missions through which we interact with the cluster as a whole. So master slave architecture for both distributed storage as well as the distributed computation. That's nothing but your map use. Okay, let's see more. So the name node, right? Name node is a distributed, uh, it's like, Name node is like the master in a distributed storage layer that's called as HDFS. Okay, so name node, right? What was the request it gets? It redirects to the data nodes to perform the low level IO task. Suppose you want to read a file from HDFS. So the request goes to name node, and the name node says, uh, you know, the file is located at so and so block of our data node, so go to the data node and then read the block. So the, such kind of an operation, you know, name node does. The name node is like a master where it will redirect to appropriate data nodes for performing low level IO tasks. So the name node keeps track of how files are broken down and where they are stored. In the sense, the name node maintains the metadata of the whole cluster. So it maintains the metadata saying, okay, a file is made up of so and so blocks, and this block is stored at so and so location of a computer. So such kind of information the name node knows. And so whenever it gets a request of you know adding a file or uh, reading a file or deleting a file, so it will redirect to appropriate data node so, and uh, to perform the low level IO tasks. So because you know uh, it maintains the metadata of the whole cluster, right? And a cluster would be of size or petabytes as well. Uh, you know, you are, uh, so it, this would be like very, Heavily IO intensive programming, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, very highly IO intensive in the sense that uh, it requires a lot of RAM, you know, to handle such a very high request that would be coming from the client. Okay, a lot of RAM, a lot of processing. So, uh, to so to reduce, uh, you know, the amount of workload the name node is having, right? So, what people generally do is they don't give name node, the additional responsibility of, uh, you know, handling the low level task. Okay, so to reduce the workload, the name node, right, doesn't store any data or perform any tasks. So the name node doesn't perform any task or, you know, 
uh, store any data for that matter. It only stores the metadata of the whole cluster. That's the only thing. And whatever the request, the main node gets it will redirect to appropriate data node to perform you know, the, uh, the very low level tasks of, uh, you know, the very low level IO tasks. So, the name mode. Without the name mode, right, the file system can't be used because name mode is a place where the whole metadata of the cluster resides. And uh, if your name mode gets down, yes, that's a single point of failure to the flip cluster. Yes, we, we do have a workaround for this, then we will to look at that. Though it's a single point of failure, we still have a workaround for this. Okay, so. When the name node obliterates, right? When the name node gets down, so all your files are lost. Okay, but if you are if you are if you are able to revive back your name node, your files are or not lost because you know the metadata still decides, and uh, you know you can you can still get back the files. Okay, so in order to in in order to you know uh, make name node resilient to these failures. You need to give name node a good configuration mission where uh, you need to ensure that your name node doesn't fail, or the probability or the chances that your name node fails should be as limited as possible. And the name node is basically constantly engages with the data node, you know, to know the status of the health of you know the flow mission. So the slaves, uh, the slaves over here, right? In the in HDF is all data nodes. They are looked into the previous picture as well. The masters in HDF, so the name node and secondary name node. We're gonna look at secondary name node in some time, okay? But the slaves, slaves, right? They are called data nodes, and data nodes are the place where the low-level IO tasks are performed. So the name node constantly engages with the slaves or, or the data nodes over here to know the status of their help, like. Yes, is this is this data node or is this slave available? Did did it go down by any chance? If it goes down, then it doesn't uh, you know uh, the name node doesn't redirect the client to that particular data node. So it will redirect the client to other data nodes, right? So data node, it is the slaves of uh, the hexfeeder, right? So each slave machine of a cluster will be a data node. Okay, so whenever a client request comes to the, comes right. So it will it will be directed to the name node. Whenever the client request comes to a Hadoop cluster, it will be directed to a name node. So the name node, you know, divides or say for the, for this matter, it is for uh, uh, addition of a file into your Hadoop cluster. You get a request to add a file to Hadoop cluster, right? So how the, how that uh, low level live task is performed, right? So that request will go to name node, and the name node will see, okay. Uh, this so and so data node is occupied so much. Okay, so the name node will divide the data into into multiple blocks, right? So divide the data into multiple blocks, and then it will it will redirect to appropriate data node to store the particular block. Okay, so such is the kind like uh, how the how the name node works. So if the block size is like 64 MB. So when if you want to if you want to upload a file of 100 MB, right? The name node will uh, divide that uh, 100 MB file into 64 MB each, and for for the first 64 MB, it will redirect you to store the 64 MB of file into data node into appropriate data node. Then the other 36 MB would be stored in other data node software. Okay. So whenever uh, you get a request to uh, to you know retrieve the file or uh, to retrieve the file or remove the file. The same process applies. It will uh, the request will go to the name node. The name node will uh, redirect you to appropriate data node to fetch the block, and then the client will communicate with the data node. Okay. So the other thing is data nodes. When the intercommunication between the data nodes is not present at many of the times, unless you know the name node, you know directs the data node to communicate with other data. Nodes. So data nodes, data node one and data node two, generally they don't have an interaction between them both because they are independent of each other. Only if the name node says, "Okay, you, Mr. Data, data node one, you communicate to data node two, 
then only you know data node uh, the inter communication with the data node will happen so when does this happen if you ask me this question as in when does this happen so this happen for the only reason that you know uh, this uh, what do you call that the replication you know the the replication of the redundancy of a storage is always considered in the picture because uh, we are saying you know the chances that your machines getting uh, with getting done cannot be uh, ruled out so we are storing the files in a redundant fashion a redundant fashion in a sense oh, by default the redundancy is free in hadoop cluster okay so if you if you are storing the files in a redundant fashion right you will be pushing the file only once into hadoop cluster but the hadoop cluster as a whole will replicate it more than will replicate it twice once again so the inter data node communication fashion takes place at that point of time so who directs this inter data node communication is an in node Okay, so so let's see, like uh, you know, how the metadata is in store. So the main node will have a metadata, something like this. Say, I have, I have, you know, a file called data one. So which is made up of different blocks, say one, two, and three. And I have another file called data node two, which is made up of file blocks, so and so, four and five. And there are multiple data nodes which are available in the whole cluster. Okay. Uh, can uh, can everyone view the phone? Oh yeah, that's good now. So, uh, so uh, a request from uh, a, a request. It's like if you have any doubts, right? Uh, uh please uh please ask a question straight away uh interrupt me in between that's okay so we shouldn't be missing any any part of this whole conversation okay so we have uh, so if so these are the blocks and this is a file okay so because we are saying you know the block or the file is being stored in a redundant fashion uh, with a redundancy of 3 Uh, so, which essentially means that each and every block profile is being stored at a redundancy of three. Suppose that we have four data nodes available. Okay. Suppose uh, you know let's take the first file where uh, it's made up of one to three blocks. So, block one resides on this data node as well as this data node as well as this data node. So, the block two resides on this, it resides on this, and as well as it resides on this. So, what happens? Suppose say one of your data nodes has gone on, where your block two is residing. So what happens? Your block, your the same block is available on other data nodes as well, right? So whenever you are trying to read a file called as data one, you would be still be available to read all the blocks of all the blocks of this file, one, two, and three, because they are available on one of the other computers. Okay, so your data is never lost, and uh, and whenever uh, you know uh, your data is never lost. So what happens at this point of time, at this stage, is right because you know your Hadoop cluster sees the data. You know the block is replicated only twice. Okay, so it will replicate the block to another data node as well. Like whenever uh, when uh, like it will replicate that uh, block on another data node as in then it find it finds its uh, slot. So. Data nodes constantly reports to name node, saying that, okay, okay, name node, I'm having so and so block with me, and name node always contain information of saying, okay, this file is made up of so and so block. Okay, so just imagine name node contains, you know, file with the block metadata, saying that, okay, file is made up of so and so block, and now it's the responsibility of the data node. To report back to the name node, saying that hey name node, I have so and so block with me. So now name node will be in a position to say, okay, this block is replicated so and so times. Okay, now over here, right, in, in the scenario where your first data node is getting down, okay, what happens? The name node observes that you know the second block, essentially the second block, has been replicated only twice in the cluster, but whereas 
this file has to be replicated twice in the cluster. So it, it has the information. So what it does is it will replicate, you know, uh, the second block on the different data nodes which is available. So which ensures that, you know, the second block or the block number two has been replicated twice and, uh, and the replication factor is always maintained. Okay. So we'll see the, you know, the secondary name of the concept, okay. So we were talking about end node as a, as a single point of failure, right? Yes, name node is a single point of failure, but there is always a backup of, uh, you know, what happens to the name node. That's called a secondary name node. Okay. So secondary name node resides on a machine in a cluster. So even secondary name node has a dedicated machine on a cluster. It's just not the name node, it's even the secondary name node. This machine, like that of name node, doesn't have any data node or task tracker daemons running, which means that even this machine doesn't perform any low-level IO task. Okay, this is a master, this is a master machine. It doesn't perform any low-level IO task. So secondary name node, unlike the name node, doesn't record any real-time changes. So uh, what happens, right? Uh, the name node, uh, so whenever you are updating a file or maybe you are deleting the file or adding a file, right? Your name node metadata would be updated. Okay, but the secondary name node, which is the backup of the name node, doesn't update its metadata on a regular, so it doesn't up, update on ad hoc. Okay, so on a regular interval, say, say one hour or two hours, it will fetch the metadata from the name node and it, and it will update its metadata. So the communication happens with the name node, takes a snapshot of, a snapshot of the Hadoop cluster and it will merge the changes like uh, whatever is existing with secondary name node. So though name node is a single point of a failure, but manual interventions they can mitigate the data loss. Okay, the manual intervention, you can configure secondary name node as a name node and you can as well start your cluster without the name node. But yes, you know, uh, a good, uh, uh, but yes, if you look over here, right, we might be losing some bit of a data, but uh, you know, that can be uh, uh, intervened or overruled by a uh, good Hadoop admin also. So now let's see the other aspect of uh, the Hadoop. So HDFS, we, we, have, we have definitely discuss, discussed like what are the components that are there in HDFS, right? That's nothing but name node, data node, and uh, simple name node. Yeah, we go, we're gonna discuss more about this, you know, as we go further, but uh, just, get, just to get more about the glimpse of what exactly is there in HDFS or the total Hadoop, here yeah, we are going to look at, you know, at a very big picture. So the other one is a job tracker. Like this is uh, so this is uh, a different project that's called the MapReduce, where you want to see uh, the full processing of the files that are there in uh, HDFS. So this is so the job tracker is a master in the MapReduce programming. Okay. So the job tracker oversees and coordinates the parallel processing of data using a MapReduce. Okay. And whenever you submit the code, right? Whenever you submit your MapReduce code to Hadoop cluster, so what it does is your job tracker will will come into picture first. It will determine the execution plan by looking at like what are the files because of the process. Okay, and then it will take a data locality into into picture. Okay, so what is the data locality? Suppose uh, you know you you suppose you're processing. Uh, well, come here. Suppose you're trying to process you know data one file. Okay, uh, so the data one file. Suppose a block, you're trying to process block one. So block one resides on these, these three different data nodes, right? So it doesn't make any sense for me, you know, to start the process on this data node and ask the block one to get transported over here, right? So this kind of a thing will not be done. So, uh, you know, the map resist process will start on this particular data node. Because the uh, job tracker will take in the picture as in uh, the data locality is very much important in doing that, you know, map resist programming. So uh, it will, you know, determine the execution plan by looking at uh, what are the files that are the process, and it will divide the whole job into multiple uh, tasks, and if it, and each task would be assigned to task tracker. That's nothing but your slave in uh, MapReduce. So it, it will assign to task tracker, and if if any of a task fails, right, it will automatically relaunch the task. 
so there is only one job tracker per full stack there is no backup job tracker also you know it's, it's very essential to understand like why there is no uh, backup job tracker we are going to discuss it you know when the discuss in more than apple just to panic okay so it typically runs on a server as a master node of the cluster yep this is also another master node and uh, we need to ensure that in the it's also very iu intensive thing uh, because of you know uh, if you submit a lot of job site it has to do a lot of coordination with the job so even this doesn't take the responsibility of any low level iu task so task tracker is the slave of your map reduce programming so like the data storage data computation also follow master slave architecture as written also slaves at the storage level task trackers are the slaves of the map reduce level or the computational level so it's a word of a caution there's only one task tracker for one slave so you have multiple slaves with you So each and every slave, we can configure that to be a task tracker as well as a data node. So just see, we are looking at two different aspects of uh, uh, two different aspects for here. One is data node, that's the slave in HDFS, HDFS project, and the other is task tracker, that's the slave in MapReduce project. So if these two things reside on the same slave machine. So what happens is that your data locality comes into picture. Okay. so there is only one task tracker per slave there is only one data node per slave okay and the task tracker can span multiple jvms which means that it will initiate multiple jvms to start uh, you know the map in the disco time so the responsibility for task tracker to send the heartbeat to heartbeat of a task status to a job tracker so we have seen right when a job is submitted to how to pressure your job tracker will divide into multiple tasks and it will assign the tasks to appropriate task tracker okay and it's a responsibility of the task tracker to send back the report of the task to job tracker so whether it's failing whether it's you know uh, processing whether it's complete so this kind of a report so if a job tracker sees that the task tracker is not sending the status of the task right It assumes that task tracker has been dead, and it will assign those particular tasks to another task tracker. So, a client submits a task or a job to job tracker. So, it will divide the job. The job tracker will divide the job into multiple sub tasks, and each sub task would be assigned to a task tracker. So, internally, right? Internally, a task tracker will divide the task into multiple sub tasks, and you know. It, it will uh, initiate map and reduce the timing. That's okay. That we'll see, we'll see a bit later. And it's the responsibility of this task tracker to respond back to an email to, to the job tracker saying, "Okay, hey, hey, job tracker, you gave me so and so task, and this is the status of so and so task which you have assigned to me. If in any chance any of the task tracker fails, it like doesn't send the response or the heartbeat in specified amount of time. It will assume that the task tracker has failed, uh, or you know, it has died." and uh, it's going to assign this task to some other task trackers so the other part of the whole cluster we are which we are saying that something with the clients so these are not part of a cluster so the clients are used only to load the data into the cluster so if you want to submit any mapers to job you they have to go through the clients okay they have a hadoop setup but they are not part of a hadoop cluster so they are like any machine on, on a hadoop cluster but they don't have uh, you know the rights of uh, storing any data or rights of performing any uh, uh, map reduce task they only have a rights of submitting the job or maybe loading the data that's the only thing they have the rights on this so yeah let's see you know few of the hadoop biggest hadoop cluster that are uh, that are across the globe okay so yahoo they have a big hadoop application like uh, you know Uh, Yahoo Search. With that, is a Hadoop application that runs on more than 10,000 core Linux cluster, 10,000 machines. And uh, this is a statistic which I took, you know, uh, two years back. And if I remember correctly, now they are having, you know, a cluster of 60,000 nodes. Okay. And uh, producer data what is uh, now used every Hadoop uh, search query. Okay. 
So on uh, 2008 February, right? Yahoo has said that it has a biggest hardware pressure. Even still, Yahoo, even 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 today, right? Yahoo has still the biggest hardware pressure, 60,000 nodes. So a Facebook cluster, right? They said it's storing, you know, 21 petabytes of storage in single headset cluster. They have around 2,000 machines, and uh, they have given different configuration of the machine, like what what they have. So. 1,000 machines of uh, eight cores each and 800 machines of 15 cores each. The third is the RAM permission, and this can perform you know 15 nanometer of task permission. So that's a total of more than 21 petabytes of configured storage capacity. This is larger than the previously known Hadoop by Yahoo's cluster of 14 petabytes. Here, there there are clusters starting from hundreds of clusters. Like these are the things like you know what Facebook is looking at. Like that they are storing a 21 petabytes and of uh, you know in two dozen machines. Okay, I know they have uh, uh, not sure because this is the latest statistic which they have published. But post this, they didn't mention uh, you know any statistics of uh, the Hadoop cluster size what they are using. But uh, definitely they are they are using big time Hadoop in their uh, product. So I would say uh, let's call it for the day. Uh, I mean let's call it uh, let's call it up for the day and. Uh, You know, you have any questions now, right? Please shoot at me now. So the first is, ask me. Before setting code, you do more to the code, right? Yeah. Hello. Is there some work there? Ah ha. Where are they, Kerala? एच टू के इन्फोसिस प्रोवाइड वर्ल्ड क्लास ऑनलाइन आई टी ट्रेनिंग स्टाफिंग एंड सॉफ्टवेयर टेस्टिंग सोल्यूशन टू कस्टमर्स वर्ल्ड वाइड एच टू के इन्फोसिस हाउ वी आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम आर कंप्यूटर्स हंड्रेड परसेंट जॉब ओरिएंटेड ट्रेनिंग हैंड्स ऑन प्रोजेक्ट वर्क क्लाउड टेस्ट लैब रेज्यूमे प्रिपरेशन एंड रिव्यू मॉक इंटरव्यूज रोबस सिलेबस वन टाइम फी एंड लाइफ टाइम एक्सेस टू क्लासेस एक्सेस टू रिकॉर्डेड सेशन ऑफ लाइव क्लासेस एच टू के इन्फोसिस हेज वन द ट्रस्ट ऑफ थाउजेंड्स ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स वर्ल्ड वाइड फॉर अ फ्री डेमो क्लास विजिट इज एट एच टू के इन्फोसिस डॉट कॉम